Hello and welcome to this episode of Mortal Kombat X Analysis. I don't know, that was just an improv. Let's just go and get into this. Because I think I already know what this is going to be, and if it's what I think it's going to be, then I'm already excited. Yep, that is exactly what I was expecting. Alright, so before we start, I'll just start off with my standard matchup analysis, I think. Uh, so Devora and Smoke are really just kind of similar characters because both of them kind of have the game plan that they want to get in your face and mix you up. But like the interesting dynamic between that is that like Smoke has an actual good reversal, Devora does not. So if if uh, like let's say like Devora's pressuring Smoke, Smoke can get out of it and like kind of like retaliate, but like Devora can't, so really Devora has to hold pressure more, and Smoke's pressure is better. But uh, Devora's uh, like her plus frames are better, so we'll see how it works. Already off to a good start for Scar, and this can be a 50-50. That oh my god, that was insane! Look at this. He uses the interactable, and they ducked it, but that was still an insane option. That was honestly very intelligent. And he throws him, throws her into the corner, which is good. But now that now that there's just kind of this space, I feel like that the space game, spacing game, is kind of dominated by Devora. Smoke has a few options, but not really a lot of good options. And now you're in the corner against Devora. Time to guess. Yeah, do you see that? Just forward one, one, two, forward one, one, two, forward one, one, two. It's plus. Just keep doing it. And it's not like a baby shit like plus two. No, fuck that. It's easily plus ten, plus eleven. Depends on how you uh, how how good your cancels are. The fact that they're both around that interactable should be kind of scary for anyone who's blocking because that is an unblockable command grab. That was a good bait, but didn't get anything off of it really. Yeah, and see this is what exactly what I'm talking about. Look, if you're getting pressured by smoke as Devora, that's your main option, but it's not a very good option. Smoke can easily punish it and get a full combo. Whereas Devora can punish Smoke's uh, wake up, but it's a lot harder. It's definitely a lot more of a read. Good shit, good shit. Yeah, but with these kind of like these uh, ten tentacles, or whatever they're, whatever they're called, these ovipositors from Devora, she really can kind of dominate the mid mid screen. Her neutral is pretty good too, in general. She doesn't really have any notable projectiles though, in this variation. Yeah, what are you gonna do about that? That's plus eight. Into restand, unless he wants to go for the. Uh, Oh my god. Okay, we're talking about the setup. This isn't your normal restand setup. This is actually something special. So look, normal shit, of course, you expect the restand. And you were, and you were probably expecting him to do a jump one or jump two. But look at how he does it. This is, an, this is actually an insane setup. Okay, so jump one, run forward. Instant overhead or low. The reason this setup is so special is because when you actually hit them with the jump one in that in that way, you are so plus on hit. Like plus 30, I think. Something ridiculous. You can actually get a guaranteed overhead or low mix up in the corner. Which is exactly what happens here. Alright, so let's just replay now. There's nothing you can do about that except guess correctly. 
And you can do it again and again, too. That's the also the insane part about it. Switches the, the Shinnok. Not a bad choice, to be honest. Especially not Imposter. Imposter Shinnok is the best character in the game. Just want to point that out for anyone who doesn't know. That's plus 7 on hit, but it's still kind of dangerous. They could have backdashed out of that. But why would you? It's kind of risky. Especially at high level. I actually really like that setup. See, actually, let me rewind again. This is something you need to know. Whenever somebody goes for the invisibility, they're always going to go for back one or back three three down or what is it? Back three three up four, or down four, whichever one. The low low overhead string. Like right there, that's exactly what they just did. It basically turns that string unblockable because no one's going to be able to see the string and guess. Oh, low low overhead. Yeah, that is that is also very insane. The fact that smoke can get a 50-50 that's plus 8 on block. 20 frames is reactable, but it isn't very easy to react to at all. Especially when you have like when you have like a black body and this kind of dark background. That is a legitimate strategy. And I don't know what it is about down four and uh, sparks, but it seems to be really good. I think it is a true block string. But I don't know if that's uh, false information or not. Wow, this is actually pretty good damage for, for smoke. 37 for a bar is not terrible. Yeah. That probably wasn't guaranteed, but it was a good it was a good mix up. There are things you can do about that though. Yeah, and if you get um if you get your face stolen in the corner like that by an imposter, you really just gotta guess. There like you don't have to necessarily block high or low the same way that you would with the triborg, especially smoke, but you do you do get mix. You don't really get the same level of mix, though. Great conversion. I take everything I said back about his combos. Good character awareness, too, to know exactly what the, um... What the combo would be in that situation. With smoke's uh, with his stolen move. That's the hard part about playing Imposter Shinnok. Yeah, he's the best character in the game, but you really have to know like what is my combo in the corner versus smoke. What is my combo mid screen versus smoke? And that combo isn't the same versus Scorpion or Sub Zero or Molina or anyone. Because if you're going to play Shinnok or Imposter Shinnok the way that you're supposed to, you really want to be stealing their moves. Because that, not even for the move, the um, the face steal is a really good move. Honestly, the fact that you have to use the opponent's move is just, like, it, it, that's an inconvenience. What you really want is the face steal. Yep, and that is plus. There's a gap, though. I think that was, a, that was a good choice. Yeah, that was a good choice to bait out his wake up there.
Again, this setup is scary. Alright, let's go to the next one. We'll just go ahead and skip forward. Whoops, that was a little bit too far. Again, down four into sparks. I'm pretty sure that is a that is a true block string, but I could have been misstrip I could have been led astray. Good throw. Scar's throw um they like the timings that he goes for throws are actually really good because you can't really like he doesn't like telegraph them like some people will just like walk up and throw or something. He actually chooses really good times to do it. I'm not sure if he's trying to, ro to um, stand around that interactable or not, but I don't think he is. That said, if you use that interactable right there to your best... you I mean, if you've seen Scar's Unseen play, you'll know what I'm talking about. Triborg has some disgusting setups next to one of those interactables. Especially Cyrax, but Smoke has them too. I actually don't know what you do about that, because I think that's plus on hit. There's not really anything you can do except guess. It's probably not as plus as, uh, it's not guaranteed overhead or low status, but it is really good. Is that it, or is that... Yep, that is it. So, if you like this as much as I did, please consider dropping a like or something else. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.